you might be making one of these mistakes right now and it's silently killing your chances. Now I've reviewed hundreds of portfolios and these four issues show up almost every single time. Now if you can fix them, your portfolio goes from meh to higher this def. So let's start by breaking down what a portfolio is. Now when I say portfolio, I'm talking about your public proof of skill. Now usually that's a personal website with your best projects, but it could also be a GitHub profile or even just a short list of projects that you include on your resume. Now the purpose is simple, make it obvious in under 20 seconds who you are, what you can do, and why someone should talk to you. Now recruiters and hiring managers are busy, and they're not going to dig for answers, they're probably not even going to click into your projects, they're simply going to skim, and if they don't see something compelling immediately, then they're going to move on. That's just how it works. Now that's also why it's always better to have between one to three really good portfolio projects rather than having ten half-assed ones. Good projects are ones that people will pay attention to, they're not going to read through a list of 10, 20, or 30 projects, they just want to look at the best ones. So throughout the rest of the video, I'm going to go over the four mistakes that most developers make in their portfolio, so stick around. But first, before we get into that content, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Now this is an online learning platform designed specifically for backend development, and it approaches learning in a way that's far more interactive than the usual video-based courses. Rather than having you sit through hours of lectures, Boot.dev puts you straight into hands-on coding. You'll work directly in your browser, building real projects while learning backend fundamentals like APIs, databases, and server-side logic using Python and Go. Now what makes it stand out is the way it borrows from game design. You'll progress through levels, unlock new content, and keep your momentum up as you go. Now, the platform is filled with exercises and practical challenges, so you'll end up writing a lot of code, which is exactly how you improve as a developer. Now, all of the core content is free to access, and if you decide to commit to the annual plan, you can use the code TECHWITHTIM to get 25% off your first year. I've been through the content myself, and it's honestly surprisingly addictive, so make sure you check it out. So with that said, let's get into the first mistake. Now that is that there is no wow factor. The first thing that a recruiter is going to notice is your list of projects. And if they're generic, if it's another to-do app, a weather app, or an algorithm visualizer, then they're gone before they even scroll. Now you need at least one project on your resume that makes them stop and say, oh, that's actually interesting. This doesn't mean you need to reinvent the wheel or invent something groundbreaking. You can take a common project and just give it a twist. For example, instead of building a plain CRUD to-do app, you can build an AI-powered meal planner that generates shopping lists or recipes. Or instead of a stock price tracker, make one that uses sentiment analysis from news articles. The functionality might be similar to something that you'd build in a tutorial, but the presentation and the context is what's going to make this stand out. So you need to force a pattern interrupt in the reader's brain. So that's where they're actually going to stop to read everything you wrote because it's not the same thing that they've seen millions of times again. Now quick tip here, any project that has real users always gets attention, so if possible, aim to get other people using your project. Overall, you need to write and display your project in a way such that when someone looks at it, they go, oh, that's different, that's unique, I actually want to look more into this. If it's the same thing that they've seen hundreds of times before, they really just don't care and it doesn't do anything for you. Now speaking of which, that leads me to mistake number two. Now the second mistake, and this is one that pretty much all of you are probably making, is having ambiguous descriptions or horrible project names. Now look, no one cares about your project if they can't figure out what it is within seconds. If your project is called My Final Year Project, or Cool App, or To Do App, or AI App, you've already lost them, right? Your project name should clearly explain what it is and why it matters. If you say React Dashboard, that tells me nothing. But if you say e-commerce sales dashboard for real-time order tracking, that gives me a reason to actually click or to read further and see what it's about. Now the same goes for the descriptions of your project. Keep them to one or two sentences that explain what it does, what tech stack you used, and what the overall outcome was. For example, you could say a Flask and Postgres SQL web app that tracks gym workouts and suggests new exercises using OpenAI's API. Now that's enough to make someone curious without overwhelming them with data. So what you need to do is cut out the random names and always use a few word descriptive text. A project that I used to have in my resume, for example, was AI plays Flappy Bird with an evolutionary algorithm. 
Now, it's not what I would name the app if I was going to put it on the App Store, but it's something that's easy for people to understand and allows recruiters to know what the project is actually about. So in short here, don't use random ambiguous names and make sure your description is short and to the point while displaying what you actually built, the tech stack you used, and why it was impressive. So now we move on to mistake number three, which is having no role targeting. Now your portfolio should tell a story about the type of developer that you are. If you're applying for backend roles, then the first thing in your portfolio shouldn't be a random front-end clone that you made two years ago. Now I see this all the time, right? Portfolios with an ML model, a WordPress blog, a Python game, a React mobile app, all in the same list. Now that doesn't make you look versatile, it just makes you look unfocused. Instead, you need to pick two or three projects that align directly with the type of job that you want. If it's a backend job, you need to show an API project, a database heavy web app, and something that demonstrates maybe performance optimization or some kind of deployment with Docker and Kubernetes. Now this way, if a recruiter is looking at your work, they can instantly connect the dots and say, okay, this person is a backend developer. In fact, this is the biggest mistake almost all of the developers I work with make. They have no focus or specialty. When I open up their portfolio or resume, I should know immediately what type of developer they are, but most of the times I have no clue. So the moral of the story here is that you don't just want to be a general software engineer. You want to specialize in something like backend, frontend, mobile apps, etc. And this is something I focus on a lot in my dev launch program, and we've seen a lot of success tailoring people to specific roles. So when you're creating your portfolio, or at least picking the projects you want to put on your resume, make sure you pick the ones that speak to the type of role that you're applying to. Again, applying to front end, have a few front end projects. Applying to back end, have a few back end projects. Don't throw random projects on your resume that aren't related to your role type because that's just not going to help you out. And like I said, it doesn't make you seem versatile, it just makes it seem like you didn't have another good back end project to put there. Now we move on to mistake number four, which is that your portfolio just looks amateur. Now this could be in the way that you're naming projects, the way that you're describing them, or even just how the project looks. For example, if your project has some type of presentation, so it's a website or a full stack application, if I open it up, it better look professional. It better look like a real software developer built this and it wasn't built in 2009. Now look, I know a lot of us hate designing, a lot of us want to focus on the back end or clean code or building something scalable, but the truth is that everyone is going to judge what you built just by looking at it for a few seconds. So if you are going to have some kind of front end or some kind of website, it needs to look really, really good. Now fortunately today, we have AI, which can design and make things look really impressive extremely fast. So even if you're not a front-end engineer, there's really no excuse for having a poor-looking portfolio or a poor-looking website. So make sure you're using complementary colors. For example, you can literally go to Adobe's website and generate a color palette that has colors that work together. Make sure you're using a modern font, make sure spacing is consistent, make sure it's mobile responsive. All of these things are just best practices that you need to have in your portfolio projects because again, God forbid anyone does actually look at it, it cannot look amateur. I cannot tell you the number of times that someone tells me they have a portfolio website and then I click it and it just looks like it was made out of a random tutorial, right? It looks like you just learned HTML and CSS. Don't put that there, it's going to do more damage than it is good. It needs to look really, really nice. After all, you had infinite time to build this portfolio project, so there's no excuse for it looking amateur. I would just say overall, any project you have, ask yourself, is this what a professional software engineer would build and would deliver on a job? If it's not, then you need to do a better job making it seem more professional. Okay, so those are the four mistakes, and I guarantee that you're making at least one of them. These are minor, these are not rocket science. I'm sure a lot of you already know about these mistakes, but you need to actually put the effort in to fix them. And just to quickly recap here, number one, you need to have some wow factor. Number two, you need to give this a good name that is descriptive and actually makes sense. Number three, you need to target a specific role. And number four, you need to make sure this doesn't look amateur. If you implement these few mistakes, your portfolio is going to look significantly better, and it may actually be the reason you end up getting called in for an interview. Anyways, that's all I had for this video. If you guys want more information on this topic, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing you in another video.